Good afternoon and welcome to another Tea with the Vicar. Um, hope you're all doing well. I'm looking forward to my biscuit of choice today which is a party circle, a pink one. I'll enjoy that in a minute and I uh, hope you're all doing well today. We're continuing to look at the parables of Jesus and this one is another one about prayer and really a parable telling us how not to pray. So Luke 18 verse 9. Jesus taught this parable to those who were convinced they were morally upright and those who trusted in their own virtue yet looked down on others with disgust. Once there were two men who went into the temple to pray. One was a proud religious leader, the other a despised tax collector. The religious leader stood apart from the others and prayed, How I thank you, O God, that I am not wicked like everyone else. They're cheaters, swindlers and crooks, like that tax collector over there. God, you know that I never cheat or commit adultery. I fast from food twice a week, and I give you a tenth of all I make. The tax collector stood off alone in the corner away from the holy place, and covered his face in his hands, feeling that he was unworthy to even look up to God beating his breast and sobbing with brokenness and tears, saying, God, please, in your mercy, and because of the blood sacrifice, forgive me, for I am nothing but the most miserable of all sinners. Jesus said, which one of them left for home that day made right with God? It was the humble tax collector, and not the religious leader, for everyone who praises himself will one day be humiliated before all, and everyone humbles himself will one day be lifted up and honoured before all. I guess one of the hardest things for us to have is, is humility. In our humanness, in our sinfulness, it's very easy for us to think or say, Oh, I'm better than that person over there. I'm much nicer than that person over there. Yet we're called to be humble because Jesus was humble. Jesus, the foot washer of his disciples, was willing, that the, the Prince of Glory was willing to, to kneel before his disciples and wash their feet. How much more would, should we be ready to serve each other and not look down on each other. To love each other as God calls us to love each other. You know, it's, e it's even easy in this parable to start thinking, Oh, I'm not like that Pharisee, I'm much better than him. I wouldn't pray that sort of prayer, I'd be much more humble. And straight away, we've made ourselves like the Pharisee by looking down on somebody else. So it's really hard and we need to keep checking with God and saying, Lord, just teach me humility. You know, because it's when we're humble, then we can come before God. It's when we realise that we need him, that he can start dealing with us and actually use us. He uses us in our weakness. I don't believe he uses us in our strength. You know, I had a, a dream a few years ago. Um, I don't often have dreams like this that I can remember very vividly. And in this dream I remember I was in a prison dungeon and I was queued up. And I can remember talking to the person behind me saying, well that's it, I'm going to be sent down. They're going to put, lock me away and throw away the key. And uh, I was in this queue and the jailer was there at his desk and he was checking his ledger. And he had his head down. And I, I can remember getting to the front of the queue and standing in front of the judge and thinking, well, that's it. I know I'm guilty. And then the jailer looked up and it was the face of Jesus. And he said, no, you're free. Wow. Now, what a wonderful dream that was that really gave me confidence 
that I am free, that Jesus has forgiven me. Despite all the wrong that I've done, God loves me and he sent his son to die for me and for you folk out there. He loved you so much. He loves you, he loves you, he loves you enough to die for you. <laughs> and I'm going to keep saying that all my life because it's the most magnificent, wonderful and sometimes I just want to jump out of the chair and, and dance around but I can't at the moment because I'm in front of the camera and just tell you, God loves you. He loves you, he loves you, he loves you. He thought you were worth dying for, he loves you so much. He can't keep his eyes off you, he thinks you're tremendous. He bled and died for each person out there. That demands a response. And my response is, thank you, Lord. I know that I'm a, a, a sinner, that I've done wrong. But I know because of that sacrifice, you've made me right before you, Lord. And now I want to follow you all my life. And that's going to be my prayer for the rest of my life, I pray. And I hope it's going to be your prayer too. Because that's how you get peace over panic. Calm in the chaos and faith over fear because we need not be afraid with our Heavenly Father God as our Father. Amen.